So quiet. Hmm. I know I'm trying to see if I managed to see any sea plane mm -hmm. in the <laughs> sediment. Because uh, the a little last bit previous lower. dive we saw uh, several you might want to wait a bit because you've been tugging me for a while. This one. I know. I'm just trying to get here so we can see something and then so far we I'll relax seen and let uh, right, I'll come down a little bit then. No sea pens tonight yet, huh? Today. <laughs> Some really cool rock formations though, like look at that. Yeah, it's that like broken right open the lasers here. Yeah, broken open pillow basalt with its yeah, structures. It's pretty cool. Sure. Take a zoom on it if you will. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Thanos. Whoa, that's really cool. Wow. Little squiggly really cool. looking things. On the breakage on the side, it looks almost yeah, like. Yeah, there was one of the scientists ashore had a good description of this earlier. Are there any small ones in the area that you would want to sample, Dwight? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. They're all so big, though. We can make it work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it on Herc the roof. Herc does have whole arm. Hold the chisel mm -hmm. out with one arm and we'll bang on it with the other. Yeah. Kirk does have two arms, so. Um, you want to find something at the bottom here? Maybe something that's fallen off this? Oh, no, I'm no good. We got a rock not too long ago. Roger we'll that. Wait till we get to the next waypoint. Okay. Oh, let's. Want to zoom in? So, overall, what we have seen since the beginning of our, our shift is a little bit more sponge stalks and few big sponges. Uh, it's still the dominant to be bamboo coral. Unfortunately, no sea pens between the sediments, that uh, soft sediments, what we have seen the previous dive. But we, we still have hope. Mm. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. This is like another headless sponge stock, <laughs> right? Looks like it. If it's not named yet, I recommend Ichabod. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just putting it out there. You know, you got it. Oh man, is this greatest achievement if it if it works? <laughs> Bridge nav. Five zero one one zero, please. So here's the description Thank from you. Amber about the truncated pillows. Those patterns are on the insides of the pillows and are fracture patterns from the cooling of the lava mm -hmm. that can sometimes be easily seen despite the ferromanganese crust. So when you see them inside a round feature, you're looking at the encrusted cross section of a basalt pillow. Yeah, very cool. Wow. So zoom in, panels. Lots of bamboo cores today, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely the dominant. Oh, come wide. Thank you. We had a question earlier in the chat, which would probably take hours to really truly discuss, but what do you guys think about the parallels between deep sea exploration and space exploration? Does it keep you up at night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ocean's harder. It is harder. Um, but NASA doesn't want you to know that. <laughs> 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 it's classified. There's some uh, similarities, though. Yeah, Definitely. it's just like, it's, it's the possibilities of it, you know, uh, the, of, of extreme conditions. Because these are pretty relatively extreme, I guess. Oh yeah. Um, but you know, there are there are conditions similar to this on some of the moons of Jupiter. You know, even though it's not necessarily water, uh, the way we know it, H2O water, but it is like liquid liquid bleh, liquid methane and stuff like that. So we are curious of what kind of things can sprawl out of there, if any. Uh, but yeah, it. it there's a, a, zoom lot in of, a, little bit, a lot of parallels. Mm. 
Jane, do you have this one? Bruce Angie! <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's got a. It's waiting for it. It's got uh, like. Cr chrysanthemum. Yeah. <laughs> chrysanthemum, yeah. It's got some kind of like ombre fading of colors. It's large. Can you come wide, please? Oh. Yeah, it's You're quite right about the color on the triclops. It's slightly off. Well, uh, she was saying earlier that she was changing the contrast a little bit, so. Ah. So it could be just that, not necessarily. Still waiting for a Dumbo octopus. Yep. Yeah, we're behind, guys. Yeah. They Story are the fan nothing. favorite. We're losing. Very much so. Okay, but how many shrimp True. has the other watch seen? True. Three. I, they don't even care about shrimp. They're yeah. counting octopus. <laughs> it's not they're, fair. They're, counting their <laughs> they're laughing behind our backs. Yeah, they're they're right. Right. <laughs> Those idiots are counting shrimp. Huh? They're like on another <laughs> genus. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> <laughs> Bam. <laughs> a burn, That's awesome. a, a burn on us. Oh no! <laughs> no competition between watches, but right. <laughs> right. Yes, we love them. <laughs> yeah. What? Why wouldn't there be competition? <laughs> You're right. There is no com competition, but we are winning. <laughs> criteria for winning is, but <laughs> easy, <same>. I win. <laughs> Lynette, we have a question. Is the ROV in front of Nautilus or being pulled? Um, so the ROVs are trailing behind Nautilus. So um, we essentially pull Atalanta. We kind of tow Atalanta along behind us. Um, and then Hercules is pulled connected to Atalanta with a 35 meter tether um, and can essentially move in that radius around wherever Atalanta is positioned. Thank you. Yep. Can you look here? Yeah, sure. Now, I, when I look out the dot, white dot, I f stay thinking it's a potential squat lobster in distance. <laughs> <laughs> We're still Bridge at 3,000 meters depth. Oh, wow. We really haven't gained too much elevation at all. You can go ahead and zoom, Panos. 50110, please. Thank you. It's another one. So it looks like color flake? Yeah. Colorifers? Try to get a good shot of it in the cinema cam. So Go this is not a bolosoma because the stock right. comes into the concave side. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Cool. It's a. Um, it's a color. Um, your tip. Color uh, first. I can't pronounce this Charges. stuff. It's coming back. Here we go. What is it called? Call of, is it call of fakes? Call it, yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, this is the cauliflower? Cauliflower, cauliflower yeah. <laughs> 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 we started talking about tacos and pizza the other night, too. The not cauliflower. Cauliflower tacos. Is that a thing? I don't know if it should be. Cauliflower tacos? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but like it's like tacos, but like instead of meat, it's cauliflower. Ah. Cauliflower. It's a meat substitute, you know? Or like Cal taking the place of the meat. I don't necessarily think it's a substitute, but just. Oh. Right. I think there's something in there. I didn't eat lunch today. Uh -oh. Yeah, womp womp. Zoom in. 
All I had today was a piece of bread and the snack pack. I just typed in Kalafakis. <laughs> <laughs> we always save our food conversation for the last hour, so we need to wait six more minutes. Well, actually, I don't know what I missed, uh, but there's person. turnovers for a snack down there. Uh -oh. <laughs> You didn't bring watch. us all one? I thought about it, but they are covered in powdered sugar. I don't know if the next watch would appreciate uh -huh. that. Uh oh. Okay. Well. I thought you meant turnover for like to go get snacks. Like they're gonna come up and get us. We would just us. Say oh no no <laughs> like like Relief. a pastry. Oh, look at that cliff. Look at that cliff. Pastry team oh, turnover. We would just say it's marine snow that we just at the control band with. <laughs> uh, that 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 is a cliff. Um, not convinced it's a cliff. A ridge, at least. There's it's a ridge. It's just. Well, what's the difference between a ridge and a cliff? A cliff is a sh draw. Oh, Michael's getting scared. I know. I was going to say, are we going back to our <laughs> biggest fears here? <coughs> Interesting. Looks <laughs> like another colophagus. Mm, looks like it's, the, it's concave instead of convex. So I'm not sure if it would be. A balusoma or something. That one looks similar to the colophagus as we've seen yeah. with that kind of those so lobes so that on the front. I bet that will be a convex back, concave, concave back. Got to. Do you want to see the back? Yeah, you nah. can see the back. Oh. Perfect. Yes, please. Yeah. Just kidding. Yes. <laughs> this one looks so okay. tired. <laughs> 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 Melting. It's just like, uh. Can we zoom in, Panos? <laughs> kind of looks like a face. Oh. From the single. It's a, up a face. melting face. Like a Ooh. troll face. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's interesting, the pattern here. Yeah, it's, it's like a bit different. Oh, the stripe pattern? Or it looks like a stripe, a but probably isn't. Stem. Um, I could come down a little, I guess. Can we zoom out a little bit, please? Oh, sorry. Thank you. The stock's very interesting. Kind of looks like a pea pod a little bit. Peapod oh, along the spine. Mm -hmm. I'm doing Def so definitely mm -hmm. concave. Yeah, now we, we can start seeing better. This is an excellent pirouette that we're doing. Do -do -do, do -do -do -do. I like the webbing that, like, kind of like your, like your thumb webbing or your, sure. between cool. your fingers when it goes from the stem into the rest yeah. of the thing at the top. That's what it kind of looks like. I find that very interesting. I'd be pretty curious to drop down the other side of this ridge and turn around and look back at it if you can. Sure. Have some tether to do that. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. we might want to get out in front of Atalanta before we do that. Uh, it's getting close. Um, if you like, yeah. hurry over. You could just hurry over. If I, yeah, if I if speed up this pirouette. With, done with this sponge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think we're good with the sponge. Thank yeah, you. Just Thank you. I can come down maybe like a meter or two. You should have enough. To okay, so you want to look ridge up this ridge? This cliff? Yeah, just see Cliff what's ridge. going on down there a little bit. It's pretty cliffy, actually. I might take back my statement. Wow, it's like... Wow. Yeah, you can kind of see on the uh, high pack nav map that maybe there's a some steepness to it. Yeah. yeah. Just listen to Michael. Uh, I can come down a little what bit. What are those gray pixels on the... Is that some shading? Yeah, yeah, I think this is indicating a deeper area here. 
Well, it doesn't look like there's any amazing fauna down there, so that's, I think, good enough. No, and there's a pretty impressive uh, draw distance. Like you, you can see pretty far down there. Yeah. Well, it's rounded. Actually, rounded. it looks like there's something right on the edge of that. There's always something. Right, right where the edge. lasers are. Oh, yeah. But, all right. Okay, let's uh, zip up ahead of Angelada. Sparse. We'll hold off on a ship move for a minute. We have quite a bit of layback here. Yeah, so. uh, I'd agree with that. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, let's drive this ridge. Change quite a lot. Not much is, not much living here though, is there? Yeah, because it looks like it's very gravel. Like yeah. it's, it's a mix of a very t small piece of hard substrate with yeah, right. with sand. more of that rock formation okay. you were talking about. something here. Mm. Looks like a black coral. Can we zoom the, in, Panos? The first black coral we've seen on this watch. Is it the first one we've seen on the dive? Is the first? Yeah, I think Ooh. so. I wonder if it has to do with the depth. Oh, wow. oh. And there is True. Some We're at 3,000 meters-ish. Grover is quite lobster. Sorry, uh, current picked up here. Yeah. That's promising, right? There might be stuff. Usually when there's current, there's stuff. Usually. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Uh, hold the zoom there for a second. I'm trying to see the pinnels. All right, you can zoom in if you like. Is there an associate? Looks, Looks like, like there might be something right up there, right? Squat lobster here, I guess, but we can see. And another one here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, looks like there is another one here. Hmm. But I can't see exactly what it is. Might well, get a good view in the cinema cam if I can get it to turn. There we go. Looks like a lily patties. Ah, come on. Uh. Is that Atlanta still swinging in? Yeah. 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 yeah, we're not moving the ship right now. We're just letting some of that layback come out. Island gotcha. is definitely swinging. Ray, can we come wide, please? Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. No problem. Let's see. Oh, this is gonna look good. This is gonna look cool. This look cool. There you go. Hi. So, did you say lily pathies or leopathies? Lily. How do you spell that? L I L L I P A T H E S. Thank you. One of my favorite names. Yeah. I, li I love that name. So we have two questions that are very similar in the chat. If we have just a sec to answer them, it is, what is your most startling or favorite discovery? The Umbaluba. The Umbaluba, whatever it is. <laughs> the Salumbalula? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Tell us more about it. 
It is a giant polyp that is taller than a, on a stalk that's taller than a herd. And its tentacles and everything is bigger than like a six foot per man. This looks like potentially yeah. another one of these dead sponges. The yeah, one that we like sampled. A sponge graveyard. It does. Yeah, uh, Spidoscopulia, which is a tongue twister. Say it five times fast. Spidoscopulia, spidoscopulia. <laughs> <laughs> it appears. You can like do it. I barely got through the one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it knew what you were trying to do. Oh, is that a shrimp? I suppose. That is, doesn't yeah, look well. like a shrimp. It's one of those guys that got away from us. Uh oh. Trying get, to slur. I got the hose. <laughs> the one that got away. Oh, he's too low. He's at the sand already. Yeah, I see it. It's like uh, they know. Yeah, it was the, 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 the one of the highlight discoveries in the Pacific. The Salumalula? Yes. I'm, I'm yeah. so happy you find it the most uh, interesting. Thank you. You want to describe what it looks like? It's uh, it giant looks like polyp? something. It looks like it, oh, it's a giant polyp, but it's like one of those. Uh, is that they took a, a Stranger Things gorgon demon, uh, gorgon head? Oh, cool! <laughs> and they put it into like an inflatable be arm, like thing, just flowing in the wind. It, it's not very descriptive. I'm sorry. That's okay. We can, I think we have an image in our head. Uh, there is another. Start to zoom, we passed uh, through another black coral. I could see much of it. Just a little. Sorry, do you want to go back and take a look at that? Hey, pardon? Did you want to go back and take a look no, at the black coral? No, I think we we can continue. I think we have a target to to reach some point. Yeah, you're starting to lag behind. Starting to. <laughs> well. Atlanta is outpacing you. We're not going to get there. Not there. No, we can move much faster than Atlanta. Da, da. Yeah. I want to shoot up a couple ROV lengths. It's an easy thing to do. I think I saw a shrimp. Added it now. It's got little bubbles on it. Yeah, and it looks like its <coughs> surface is even more bubbled up than it looks like from far. Looks like another cut of focus. It's very interesting. Oh. Oops. If you think their purpose is to collect the current, then you understand, I think, why they would do that. Shrimp. Shrimp. I think we All just right. counted that one. Nope. Count it twice. All right, we got to like get goose going. Goose. Can we uh, zoom out, please? Perfect, thank you. We do have another question in the chat too. What is eDNA? Does anybody want to take that one? Sure, I can. Um, e, the E before e -D before DNA stands for environmental. We have a stock crinoid, uh, sorry. Yeah, it looks like that one we saw yesterday. Yes. Bridge now, which I've pass. already forgotten the name of. Five zero one one zero. Please. This is the one with the perfect star in the center, right? Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Or at least there was in the one we saw. Yep. And there is an associate here. I uh, don't know if it's a pneumony. Let's see if this is at the base. I'm um, sorry, I'll get back to the eDNA question in a second. No worries, take your time. He's dancing in the breeze. That's yeah. perfect, thank dancing you. Dancing in the breeze. Can we zoom out, please? Oh, well, there is something in the sand. Sorry. If it's still possible to zoom. Yeah, can we zoom in? Are you looking in the sand? Mm -hmm. That little guy the right background? 
Cup Coral? Is that a woody woody woody? What is it? <laughs> there we go. Good to me, but uh, what's huh. it? Oh, it's like something, peep it's like a tiny, looks like either something was there or, or yeah. yeah, it looks like a, I it can't tell. It doesn't look like a Cup Coral, actually. It's it does, but that's not typical on the sand. I would no, think. but like the, well, I can see the segment, the septus. Um, I can see any feature that you would, you know. That's a really good shot. That's the mass move. Oh yeah, it's about to get better. Watch, boom. They're pretty far away from that. Zoom out. Yeah, yeah we yeah. can get closer if uh, we want to identify it. Yeah, I'll see. Sure. Please. Okay. Yeah, if it's possible, that's really Yeah, absolutely. Rich. Thank you. Let's get closer here. All right, well, they're positioning. I'll just quickly give an answer to that question about the eDNA. So environmental DNA is basically taking a water sample and filtering it for fragments of DNA that is floating around in the water column, whether it's from um, living organisms nearby or fecal material or excreted um, biological material from the organisms in the habitat that you're trying to sample. In our case, we are looking for areas that have a lot of coral, um, soft coral specifically, uh, or excuse me, uh, octocorals I should say, which is seems to be um, some areas we have a lot of diversity of that, sponges too. And so we're trying to just get an idea of what is in the habitat that we're not necessarily seeing with just our one ROV track uh, by taking, I believe, they're, I guess they're primers of, of uh, DNA from a library and um, applying them to the water sample to try on? and identify what's there. <coughs> Thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing? Well, uh, yeah. yeah, it looks oh, like a yeah. type of tube. Come oh. down on the iris. Or a warm tube, tube or something. Yeah. That seems more likely than a cup coral. Yeah. yeah. Th thank you so it's got much. got the shape of a cup coral. Yeah. And it would be interesting to see. Yeah. Is that full zoom? That's perfect. I'm not sure. Is that full zoom? Yes, yes, it is full zoom, sir. Oh, yeah. So small. It looks smaller. <laughs> <laughs> you guys right. can zoom out zoom now. Zoom out, please. Yeah, let's uh, jump back ahead of Atalanta. And fish. We got something coming up in like 20, yep. oh, 20 meters. Tuna kit or something. Roger that. Looks like Rat it. tail fish. Xenophyophore. There's some uh, yeah, there's ripples in the sand, up in the sediment up here. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's nice. But it's uh, only like a small strong. snippet. It's like we're catching sure, more current. Like. Well, let's take a look at this little nodule field here. That's kind of cool. I don't think we have time to stop here. No, that's okay. Yeah, yeah we, we can do a, a fly quick flyby zoom if you like. Yeah. You can zoom in if you want, Panos. Um, just as a follow up to what we just saw, that little um, thing in the sand. Steve says it was a xenophyophore, which is a type of epifauna. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what it is exactly, <laughs> to be honest. It's a dead sponge Common here. Uh, oh, it's a clade of okay, four Panos, can you zoom out, please? I got to get going. Yeah, I'll get some more information. Can you come up on yeah. that Atlanta, please? Wow, look at that clip on Atalanta's view. Very cool. Interesting rocks. Yeah, definitely. Is that a shadow? Do we have an overhang? Uh, it's hard to see. No, I think I'm seeing a shadow from our bumper of our... Overreacting. 
What's down there? We're too big to fit down there, but... You definitely don't want to get wedged in there. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't go in there even if you asked me. <laughs> I'll do it. Pretty All right, it's a, it's a bit of a deep dive. Hope you can hold your breath. <gasps> you just see me. Like, <laughs> 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 it's like, how do you get actually, that? Yeah. Whoa. Looks like there's something in there, actually. A cavern down there. Teleportation. Is that yeah. just a rock? A little crinoid, is that what that Maybe. is? Maybe. Is a crinoid there? No, you mean this? No, yeah, I was looking at that black thing. Are you looking yeah. at it? Yeah, underneath. Oh, underneath. but it would be more interesting, the sand part. Yeah, for sure. And here looks like they have all these small colonies. Want to zoom in, panels? Of Crap needs a flashlight. Chrysogorgia or... Oh, yeah, look at all the coral on the... Oh, nice. Ooh. How amazing. Ah. What are these? All the way down inside to the inside the cavern. That's and cool. underneath the rock? Yeah. yeah. Like it's upside down or whatever. I wonder if there's like a current outlet there. And then, like, I would say yes, around. based it on how they're all the way in there. Yeah. Yeah, and where's the octopus lurking in the background? Come on. It jumps out. Come on. Boo! Yeah, craft needs a the craft okay, case. Can we uh, zoom out, please? They make those. They do, like attachments or something? Yeah, wrist, uh, camera, and lights for craft. Oh, that's so cool. Um, we have a tentative ID on this. It's a type of Chrysogorgia octocoral, which is a uh, species Ramulagorgia militaris. Thank you, Steve. It's not just me coming up with these, by the way. I have the, <laughs> I have the uh, benefit of having like the one the of the world's leading octocoral taxonomists. The lifeline. We need to start <laughs> coming up and yeah. get in front of that answer. Oh, that's a nice anemone. I don't think we have a lot of time here. Uh, he's he's, he's warming up, up for his bit. watch. Yeah. He needs to come up. Wow. I guess this isn't even really a boulder. It's more of a cliff. So Rock steep. climbing here, yeah. Yeah. Oh. We're, co we're close to the top, though. I think you can see the top. In Atalanta. Parkour. How tall would you estimate this is? Wow. S um, uh, is, uh, this is crazy. Give me a second here. Like coral looks like. Yeah, take your time. Uh, nine meters. <laughs> Ten meters. Eleven meters. Uh, uh, you can let me know when we get to the top. <laughs> Jeez. So I'm going to count it. it would <laughs> be, I can prove that data. I can count. <laughs> Wow, wow. Like it is about, yeah, about 12 meters. Big sponge. To the top of this. 12? Wow. Yeah. And here you, go, you start seeing different. Crazy. Interesting. Things might just get interesting. Community. Things might just get interesting. Sorry, guys, we're going to skip over these because i got to get a little bit ahead. Oh, there's some. What is that? Looks oh, like actually, a. Can you zoom in on that before I go? Yeah, black That's coral. A weird thing. Uh, no, this is. That's. Is more a chrysogorgia or that family? It's octocoral for sure. Okay. All right. If we can zoom in the polyps, please. We'll get a picture. We gotta go. To try to focus as well in the triclops camera. Yeah, we about time, I think. And we can look f if there is uh here. I Trim. think is a. Uh, Quite lobster, maybe. Okay, that's good. You, you may want to keep going here. I got some good picks. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure, but for sure he's uh, of the Chrysogor GG group. Um, Very satisfying. Isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Rock climbers of the world are really definitely wild, watching yeah. this, thinking, I wish I could do that. So we have, we yep, see the same one. colon there in front, some bumble corals. It's turning to, yeah, get interesting. Yeah. Just in time to well, pass it over it to the next already. crew. And waypoint two is paying off. Yeah, we got almost an R. So That's true. All right, let's... Uh, a huge colony of uh, bamboo. 
Haisa, we had a question earlier. What would you love to see but haven't yet? Well, <laughs> don't want to be biased, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think this terrain will be quite difficult for us to find. Maybe some, I would like to see sea pens, or, um, uh, because black corals we have is the two groups, sea pens and black corals, that I, I focus. But uh, in the other dive, you have seen uh, several of the black corals, but now I still wish to see more sea pens. This terrain, that's more hard substrate. We have four described species of uh, we call what we call rock pen, because they adapt their peduncle to attaching hard substrate. So maybe you can see some of them here, yeah. This is quite a. Uh, Thank you. Just start zooming in, panels. Cliff here. Oh wow! This looks like there is a tiny creature. Oh yeah. In the tip of it. Sorry, I didn't manage to get any picture of the triclop. Sorry. Do you want the triclops closer? Yeah, but you, you can finish this ahead, bridge. the polyps of uh, sure. this colony. And, uh, yes, of course. Yep. Very dense polyps. Yeah. Oh, this beautiful. And if you, you can see what it is in the tip of it. Zoom in, Vamos, if you'd like. I it's full zoom. It doesn't look like anything. It's weird. Something, but nothing. It's huh? quite. What are we looking at? That whisker? Yeah. Looks cool. Maybe it's just the reflection, and maybe there is some mucus or type of mucus that is giving the reflection, but I, I had the impression that it was a tentacle and thin of. Yeah. Yeah. This thing's really tall. Yes. Wow. That's How that's tall big. is it? <laughs> Four and a half meters. Five meters. For real? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, f I'm almost. I'm six meters off the seafloor. Wow. Mm. Taller than it looks. Yes. Yeah. Surprised me actually. You can see it in at Atlanta. It's underwhelming. <laughs> that picture. All right. We should. Um, Continue on. Let's get one more. Yeah, it might be uh, kind of flat for a while here. We'll see. Just one moment for me to try to focus in the triclops. Sure, I'll try to get the tip of it as we drive past it. So, Lynette, how far? Waypoint three is like 800 meters. <laughs> 700, anyway. Yeah, that's from perfect. two to Thank three you is 800 so much. meters. No problem. That is a nice. It's a nice shot. We're supposed to be going a quarter of the way each watch. <laughs> Oops. I've been oh. trying. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It looks like there was something. So we're, we're not even at waypoint two yet. <laughs> yeah. Literally. It is the, we, it is the that's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I don't think I've ever gotten to another waypoint. On we're going to have to extend <laughs> all the dive. No more zooms allowed. Okay, no so much to look at. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I mean, if we have to extend the dive, we'll just extend the dive. Yeah, okay. We're still at 3, Sampling at 4 a.m. We're still at <laughs> 2,970 <laughs> meters. I could do it. You want to sample 4 a.m.? Yeah. Meet you there. All right. Well, we could extend till 8 a.m. That would be even better. Why stop? We're going to decide at 4 what we're doing, if we're going to extend or not. We're going to go through so many samples, people are going to think it's a Costco. Can we zoom in, Panos? <laughs> After the conversation, I don't think I can ask for any more Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> you can get all the Zooms you want. Whoa. It's like taking the kids to Disney World. All right, we've only ridden two rides. we got to keep going. <laughs> I think this is the biggest bridge now. Going to save some stuff for the other watches. Yeah. 50110, one, please. Better not be Dumbo octopuses that we're Let's saving for them. Greedy. Shrimp. Uh -huh. Greedy watches. <laughs> oh, there's a little shrimp. 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 Uh, it's like 
finding Waldo. It's a fun <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is Where's my Waldo? impression or Jane or Jizzy will be the biggest kind of It is quite large, especially yeah. the ones. So there's some that are like whiter in color at mm -hmm. the top, and then there are some that are kind of this more like off white, beige, I don't know what you call this, tan almost. And this is definitely the largest of the t tan headed ones. It's like a cat that we've seen. It's also very, um, it's like more complex morphologically than the other ones. Looks very spongy. <laughs> mm. Oh, there's something in Accurate. there. Um, yeah, it's interesting is that, that like the sponge can worm? have so many formats, you know, can be encrusting, massive, can be globular, can be is it tubular. Um, it's such a variety of forms. For sponges like these, like, is it Environ like current conditions and stuff like that that uh, cause it to like grow in these shapes, or is it like part of the? Uh, they do whatever they want, don't they? The DNA. <laughs> it's like, oh no, it's just gonna look like this. Yeah, they do look. <laughs> they all look similar. Right. The pictures we have from other places are so almost they identical. Yeah, but. Uh, but I think it's both. You know, the baby place, has yeah. a specific for, uh, shape that is a design that is optimized through evolution. But also, the environment has a big. Uh, is, is they work together, the environment and, and what we hold in terms of uh, yeah. animals to we can optimize our complexity and our function to survival. I think the survival is the. Mingo. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I was just curious. To There's see if, like, more the environment played more of a role in its shape um, to optimize current conditions. Like, stuff. does it grow further in like one side because the current's stronger? Like on when a tree falls, like when a palm tree falls over or whatever, it'll like bend and it will just bend and go straight back up. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I think the example of the tree is is it's quite suitable as well for the deep sea. You know, if you see like in Ireland in the so west, ten meters, Lena. We are going to have a predominant west wind, and you see how the trees <laughs> turn yeah, to the is bend to the <laughs> to, to the, the west wind. as yeah. well. To the, so, um, yeah. the, if you think in the deep sea we don't have wind, but we have a strong current. So definitely you shape some of the... Ah, can you have a look? Sorry. Something down here. Yeah, let's see. Was it looks like an umbilopatis. Zoom in, Panos. Uh, is it's that? It's here. Yeah. Umbilopatis? Umbilo... Bella patis. It's closer in the... Uh, is the last zoom. It's right there in the... the uh, I can see it. <laughs> I promise. I'm just trying to get the vehicle stable. Stop at you. Can you zoom in, Panos? Is that another dandelion? I was wondering that as we were passing by it. Where? It's kind of hard to see. Oh, uh, turn the down lights off. Yeah, please. I thought I did. That's beautiful. Do we have the um, lasers on? Yes. They're we're just out of frame, I think. They're zoomed out a little. Yeah, they're just at the top there. You can oh, see okay. Is that the maximum zoom possible? Yeah. yeah yes. That, that's yes, perfect then. Thank, thank you so much. We might be able to get into the cinema cam as we, yeah, as we the, pass as we over it. As we flip by. It is very low, and the cinema cam's a couple feet is off the, yeah, the sea really floor, so really I don't know oops, how really good I can get it. For the, the relief of the, the terrain. It's a nice shot. There I am. Uh, Try to hold it still, but it's skipping across the rock, so it's like. Because every time I focus, then move, and then I know, get out of focus <laughs> again. But it, it, we have a good uh, view of the colony. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Bridge nav. 
Five zero one one zero, please. <laughs> I just noticed. Thank you. That uh, apt face has his mouth open for a smile now. <laughs> I saw that earlier today too. We got a shout out to the team for being amazing and enjoyable to listen to and learn from and hearing the joy you all share when finding something is an absolute highlight in and of itself. Yes. Oh, such a nice comment. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> I'm not used to the internet being so nice. It's <laughs> <laughs> <This is> weird. <laughs> They I'm sure there's more that Ashley's shielding us from. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm not, actually. They're being, <laughs> it was a troll, yeah. They are extremely oh. kind. <laughs> oh, that's that colony. This is another uh, uh, Chrysler Gorget on the... <laughs> Down below? Down below. Yeah, you, yeah, I don't think you need to zoom. Oh, I'm just I see noting it. it. Man. That's cool. What is this? Is this a dead sponge hanging off the edge here? Yeah, that's what I thought it was, too. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's massive. It's very Whoa. big. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounded like Bill and Ted or Who's something. Who's there? <laughs> Squat. Uh oh. Squat here. Don't you say can it. Just so Don't say it. <laughs> Don't <laughs> say it. <laughs> as long as Paula doesn't come something. running up here, we're okay. Is that is so definitely a squat lobster. All right, we can get can closer. Do you want to zoom in there, Panos? Actually, get a get a look before we. Uh... Oh, it's a crab. Dang. Uh, oh, never mind. Eh. Hey, how can you tell that it's a crab versus a That's squat what I was lobster? Wondering. I, I don't know. I know the because, uh, long uh, arms. The length have of the arms, isn't because, uh, it? Yeah, but not all of them. Have, arms? Not all of them have super long arms, though. Yeah, but they squat. It is. <laughs> By the exercises. Doing yeah, I hope everyone in the lounge well, down there is doing squats in, when we see the squat, squat lobster. Lobsters. They're both decapods. Like, this means that they have ten um, legs or arms. Ah. Yeah. So, but some of them is modified and we can't see Can properly. Some wide, is please? to carry things, some is to reproduction. Usually the fifth pair is modified in some of them. You're in a tether, the you can go ones. down there. Yeah, I'm going to go down a little bit, but um, yeah. and I really won't don't be like crossing. I, be cro I don't think I'm going to cross over it, so is you don't have to worry about me being uh, Roger if he's possible above you. Pardon? If, you know, if and when I need to get out of the way. If what's possible, sorry? To zoom, uh, I think in the possible squat lobs. Yes, yeah, yeah, I just, uh, I'm trying to get off the cliff oh, so okay. that I can come down because we're looking almost directly down at it there. I'm gonna have to do this, I think. All right, where'd you go? Is it to the right, I think? I can't go more right. You can see I'm already up against the rocks on the can other side. Can you uh, point it out in the telecaster? I, I can see it right there. Where is it? Where is it? It's um, kind of like directly below the lasers now. Okay, you want to zoom in, Panos? Ah, oh, there he is. You got to use the laser nice voice. Pew, pew. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. That sponge is so huge. I yeah, know, you can I see don't want to hit it. Looks like there is incrustation here sure. of some kind. Sure. Looks like too close. Uh, too close. Zoom out, please. This part you can see there is some type of incrustation. I could see what it is, but you see the concentrations of ophiroids just in the patch that has this incrustation. Sorry, guys. This is this is not um, this is a dangerous spot. The current currents are kind of swirling a little bit. Okay. And, uh, okay. I'm nervous with the cliff face. There's a microbial mat you can see onto the on the thing too. No problem for Some me. We, we can yeah. continue. Thanks, Thanks for keeping us safe, Thank you. James. There's a ridge. Now that's a ridge. Now that's a ridge. 
All right, well, that's where we're going, so Very let's... Very original. <laughs> nice one. Thank that you. was from before. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, I have a question in the chat. How spongy are the sponges, like the ones that we brought out of the water? Does the change in depth pressure affect them the same or different as other things? Kind of thinking the about this type of from con. Uh -huh. um, okay. Yeah, so some of the sponges are more fragile than others. We've taken up some whole colonies that have been pretty well intact by the time they get up to us. Um, and then the, as far as like the texture of them, it's it's uh, often kind of like almost fiberglass, like um, some kind of sharp edges. So it's not as soft and spongy as you might think uh, based on like, you know, kitchen sponges or anything. It's more a little bit more uh, delicate, but also kind of sharp. Um, that comes from the, the spicule features, uh, part of their morphology, just little um, calcareous growths. Thank you. But they do make it, they do make it up, up top pretty well. Um, as far as pressure changes go, we don't see a lot of, well, I, I don't know, I can't speak to this that much because I, I mostly do the eDNA filtering in the lab, not the sample <laughs> processing, but I don't think we've had a lot of issues with pressure changes. It's more about warming water um, in some of the bio boxes. So we can see like some of the corals will shed their tissue as a stress response to the warming water. It could also have something to do with pressure. I'm not totally sure. Yeah, mostly of uh, the deep sea um, that we see in a coral, they're complexity in terms of tissue and structure doesn't have cavities that uh, trap like um, water or gas exchange gases so they don't sponge because usually the pressure you compress it uh, but they we don't have like in, in most of the deep sea creatures so when we come up to the shallow uh, depth they wouldn't have much problem in terms of spanning or contract these types of cavity that would could crash us um, like as when we die for instance as a human yeah that's interesting but um uh, some of them usually what in the collection can be a, a bit um, um like with the sponge when we get we, we, we break some pieces for be able to sample but is it indeed uh, like so far, um, it's more like uh, Jane was saying that we need to be careful with the temperature of the water. Because mm -hmm. um, it goes from very cold to warmer on the surface, right? Yeah, but also some of them, they, when they stress, because there's a big change when you're collecting, then as a mechanism of defense, they release loads of Bridge, mucus yeah. and they can, um, you know, like um, almost zero, say one melt one zero, please. some mm. of the colonies. I have a umbelula that completely disintegrate but we still don't know because she was so mucous um, but I think it's more a defense mechanism in terms of the stress of collection than the pressure itself. Thank you all, excellent answers. I guess I will just add one thing. We were talking about sponge texture a minute ago. Um, so all of the sponge species that we're seeing down here are what's known as glass sponges um, in the in the group. I'm not sure if it's family or group, but the hexactinellidae uh, hexac or mm. something <laughs> thereabouts. Yeah, I think I the key to making stuff up is to say it with a four. Say it confidently, <laughs> right. I can spell it. Easily. <laughs> Exact analogy. Okay, we'll say it's that. There you um, go. Versus uh, other groups like the demo sponges. So these are uh, named for their the fact that they are, uh, their sclerites are kind of glassy, which gives them that kind of brittle but also kind of uh, sharp texture. Is that another Ichabod? <laughs> yeah, a lot of stalks without heads. Why why you call it Ichabod? Crane. Headless. Ich Ichabod crane? Because it looks like a crane? No, no Ichabod it crane. Headless torso? What? <laughs> He's the character for the headless horseman? Right, I understand that, but it's because it looks like it doesn't have a head, that's it? Yeah, yeah. No. that was the joke. <laughs> I got it, and then I got it, and I thought there was something more to it, and then I started to overanalyze it, and then... It you were way overestimating it. Way over... <laughs> yeah. 
I thought you had some hidden meaning of what. Oh, okay. Well, back when I was 12. Back, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I can tell, <laughs> talk about some deep seated fears if you want. That was horsemen. As far back as I can remember. Well, I think we opened the door to some very positive statements in the chat. OET is the best <laughs> of the best. Nothing but the best for everyone involved. I simply cannot get enough. So <laughs> grateful to have the access wow. to watch such phenomenal work being carried out every day. Thank you. <laughs> Blushing. Nautilus family. Here, look, I found a fish just for you. Oh. It's a cool oh, little wow. sand channel. And we found this fish just for you. Just for you. <laughs> oh, oh, you. oh I can't so get much. there because it's too tight. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> we zoom in, Bones? I think this all goes back to Haisa's kindness when she's asking, could you please zoom a little bit? <laughs> so everybody's giving us all these positive comments in the chat now. Quick, what is it? Cutthroat? Grenadier? I don't know. <laughs> well, it looks like he's got bitten by something. <gasps> Some scratches okay. on his back. Can, is there, can you zoom at all anymore? Stand by. Yeah, go ahead. Let's hold zoom there. Oh, oh, Seems oh, oh, to be some kind of precarious. Sort of fish. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's safe. Maybe perhaps something eel-like. I like how uh, feathery the back fin looks yeah. in the water. So I'm curious about what those scratches are on its side. I wonder if they run into things a lot. At first, I thought it looked like it almost was circular in shape, and I got really excited. That was the gasp that I made a moment yeah. ago, thinking it could potentially be like a... I'm zooming all the way there. I think I mentioned oh, cookie, oh, that's a cookie piercing. cutter sharks before, but I don't think that's That is a straight up piercing. Sometimes could be yeah, parasites, like you know. Bite. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I think I was over eager. I don't know. It does know. look like got punctured by something. Beating, there's like, there's like, two, like two punctures. Snake bite. There's some marks in his... Vampire fish. Yeah. <gasps> there's no such thing, right? What, vampire fish? <laughs> yeah. Well, I made it up, but I mean, who does, who's to say that I'm wrong? I don't know. I think there are vampire squids, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Holosaur. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> looks like, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a puncture. Uh, no. Yeah, it looks Dorsal. like today. It's different. I uh, don't maybe. Uh, hold the uh, zoom. But. Should we call him Scarface? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Could it be the Coryphenoides? Again? Yeah. Oh, Basogigas cuskiel. Oh, it's a cuskiel. Cuskiel. Did you all miss? Did you say something about the scratches on its back? Yeah, I was just trying to get a good look at them, but I, my, uh, I was over eager, thinking it might have been a cool. Something cool, but it was less cool. Than oh, <laughs> They're all cool. Well, we don't know. It, I mean, it is kind of curious that there's like two, two like deep scratches or scars, and then like there's a like puncture. A puncture holes in the middle. Yeah, I thought it was puncture holes, but I, I think it does look more like. Uh, well, this is based on absolutely no knowledge or experience, but it's a hypothesis. Um, yeah, a hypothesis that it's more likely a parasite scar. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Can zoom in, panels? I don't know much about fish parasites, I'll be honest. Oh, oh, oh. You might want to Looks start like, like coming back to me, like no. uh, laterally. Yeah. Well, we couldn't have come off that ridge For then. A moment, so. I Another little. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be coming off a the ridge. A rock pen or something? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Oh, so, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. If that's expected, then that's what we'll do. Look at this hugger. He's Bridge hugging. Or it's hugging this tree it's hugger. Tree hugger, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 50110, please. It's like, I love you. Thank Can you come you. wide, please? Oh, swim up. Want to zoom in? In the left side, sorry. Yeah, there zoom, out, big, zoom out. Uh, There's a big droopy thingy. In the cyclops, if you go more oh, to yeah. the left. Oh, it looks like a tire. What's huh? this here? Yeah. It's that might uh, be that Curse of Gorgia again. Probably. But we can't really yeah. go to it. I know if that's perfect. Yeah, I won't yeah, be able to go I around it for sure. The, the curves I thought maybe was on top chilling. Then I was going to <laughs> have a heart attack. Want to zoom in? Uh, <laughs> we don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> a good one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of a side wind, yeah. 
Squat lobster in there. Squat lobster, yeah. This looks like a... We're getting to the end of our Ram leash. I'm not sure I can get closer, but... Um, Gorgia militaris. Jane, I think we might need to update our squat spot. Oh, yeah. I'm getting better at uh, seeing what Paula sees, I feel like. Yeah. There's one. I think you Isn't have, it? like, two special eyes. We Jane. had more than two squat it's spots. It's like no? creeping into the frame. There's one a bit higher up, so I think there's two. Yeah, there's two. I think there are two. Let's see. For show. Oh, show. Come on now. Yeah, it's right there at the bend. It's a bend. I was I'm curious. So on the whiteboard downstairs, there's Can a bunch of little drawings this? of squat lobsters, and somebody wrote lobster, L-O-B-T-E-R. <laughs> and <laughs> I find that hilarious for some reason. Sure. <laughs> squat lobster. I laugh about that every time I walk by. I know. It kind of sounds like a four-year-old saying squat Yeah, my son lobster. couldn't say S's when Aww. he was little. He would have said lobster. <laughs> That's really cute. <laughs> We got another compliment. Thank you for exploring and letting everyone watch. Thank you for watching. Oh, we're almost parallel to waypoint two. We did it. Well, can't say that yet. Fifteen okay. minutes left we'll to wait. watch. <laughs> <laughs> what was the original plan? Oh. We were trying to get to. Uh, have <laughs> to don't, don't even don't, don't, bring don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. <laughs> We're uh, still not, the vehicles are still not at waypoint two. <laughs> it was reverse psychology. <laughs> You wanted the to get here the plan. whole time. He just said somewhere else. I wanted to be halfway between three and four. <laughs> That's like 2,000 meters away. That would have away. taken like six hours, though. We, like, we never stopped. So that was never so going to be possible anyway? Possible. No, I guess not. We're supposed to under-promise and over-deliver, not the opposite. Oh, yeah. Well, we have your other sponge ahead. Looks like another large caliphagus. Yeah. I'm um, seeing... I don't know if it's my impression or illusion of the the optic illusion of the the lasers, but looks huge out of the ones we have seen. It does. Wow. Yeah, it's quite big. Oops. <laughs> it's a loofah. I got a message it does from look like a loofah. <laughs> one of my fellow <laughs> teachers that they can come do some phonics lessons if we need. Some spelling help. Oh. Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> fighting words. <laughs> phonics oh, with an F, phonics. right? <laughs> phonics. F O N. That was funny. 50 or 60 centimeters <laughs> across. It's usually the other way. That, that was good. I like that. That was really good. <laughs> nice phonics joke. I love it. I made myself laugh, so that's important. Having fun. That's all that matters. Is it that's all that matters. When you get a lot these, uh, these are the dominant species. Can I you zoom in a little bit, Panos? Uh, Don't you think of this ridge yeah. so far? I haven't really been thinking that much about the sponge you assemblages, there? but yeah, you're right, there's sports. definitely... Oh, Thank you. Spartan. Oh, it's okay, go ahead. Cool, cool. Could you all remind me the name of this one? Sorry, I'm not that quick on identifying. Uh, this is the Colophagus, I was uh, wondering. Uh, yes. It's in the Rosellidae family. It's like a five point. There's like a five second, one, two, three, four. Seems Check a little that. more orangey. Mm. Looks like a bust. Like you, something I don't you'd know see if at the a, colors would be related to their health, uh, because one, I would be interested to check on that. Lufa. So, part Jane, I will say something. Part uh, I, I cut you. What you were saying? It wasn't anything important. I'm sure. Twenty twenty three. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I can't it's remember though. Oh, I think I was just agreeing with whoever had said that Colophagus seems to be the dominant um, species here of sponge because we've seen more diverse sponge assemblages elsewhere on other seamounts. We've seen Tritoplora, although there was those large varieds that we saw, that we sampled, and we saw a dead one. Oh, this one seems a little darker, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Maybe it's older. Yeah, it looks like it, maybe. I think definitely here is more sparse. We don't see, we see big, large colonies, All right. or very small. Yeah. <laughs> Different currents. I don't know. Mm. It's almost like a spider web. It's so yeah. pretty, though. I 
think because it's darker you could see more of the... The little pyroid in the top. Yeah. If you guys will excuse me, I want to talk to Steve and Rob before this watch change and determine if we're going to extend the dive. So, not a problem. I am going to sign off and uh, thank you for a great watch. Thank you for joining us. See you later. Thank, thank you, Dwight. Thank you so much. Bow, 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 bow. All right, let's uh, turn around and keep going. Can we zoom out, please? Do you guys get the shots you need? Yes. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. In abundance. Oh, like it's you really can see beautiful. like fractions of like remnants. Some other ones that were here. And the clops. And the clops. Let's try to reach the mansion. Uh, Dwight goes now and we fly to the, <laughs> the point Just eight. straight to waypoint <laughs> yeah. four. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> and, like, we got ten minutes. <laughs> we got 10 minutes, all right. How many meters did you say that was, Lona? Like uh, 800 meters. <laughs> we could do it if we were like in a Fast and the Furious movie. <laughs> That's what needs to happen next. Uh, now we are going to see these very skinny stalks. I don't know if they're colonies. Can we uh, zoom in panels? Nice and slow. Yeah, if it's not put your, it looks like bamboo. Yeah, that boost yeah. Okay. Zoom in. Branch nodes. Zoom, 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 zoom. Not much on it. Yep. No, but something there, actually. But don't need to, to hold here. I think All if right. you would like to zoom go out, ahead, please. it's better. Thank you. Yeah, you need a lot. Uh, oh, we're okay. Yeah, I do want to get up ahead so that we can, we have some time to hand over. Might be best if you lateral, maybe? So get I'm trying okay. to get as high on the ridge as we can while still following the boat. Can we have three zero meters, one one zero, please? Um, but we do have to kind of grab to the right. Thank you. Not squat to the right. Trim. Is that, a, oh, is that sediment over there? That's a big rock. Okay, that's a boulder. We have another question about what you'd be most excited to see right now, and I'm just going to answer Salum Balula. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because my friend Aisa would be so excited, <laughs> overjoyed, that I would just love to see her enthusiasm. <laughs> and Michael got to see one on the last expedition to Johnston, so we've got our fingers and toes crossed. <laughs> as far as we know, the only one in the Pacific. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Unlikely. Yeah, we need uh, soft sediment for that, and um, because of that, I was paying really attention everywhere that we have uh, uh, mm. sedi soft sediment accumulation. Because, uh, like we saw in the last dive, we have the two different communities: the one for soft sediment and for the hard so sediment in terms of corals. And uh, we saw that it was uh, about Cena. That's uh, species of uh, a genus of uh, a sea pen was quite abundant so my hope it was also in this dive between um, the hard and soft we could see some but so far all the octocorals has been absolutely stunning uh, the sponges as well I've learned so much and, and it's nice to see different communities for instance um, in Northeast Atlantic where I had the opportunity to do most of uh, my my dives and survey. We have uh, quite abundant thermal sponges there and glass sponges as well. Like so it's nice to see the, yeah. the difference between Let's pick it up. the Atlantic and the Pacific. And I'm we don't have to take it with us. Glass too we could just like for hold on to it for a while. Thank you, Aisa. That was, that was very nice. <coughs> 
Um, this one says, thank you for the science and the humor. I will have nightmares trying to pronounce all the scientific terminology. That is happening to me every night. <laughs> <laughs> Say a spidoscopulia three times fast. <laughs> have fun sponging it all in. Love it. And then thank you at all. It's fantastic from Australia. Yeah. Gotta thank go this you. way. This yeah. Way. That means a lot. Yeah, the work is hard, us, yeah. super rewarding, but it's very nice to hear all the positive feedback. Thank you very much. Just got a little ahead of Analyza. Just let it catch up. And then we'll continue on. And it's getting close to that time. We're going to be preparing you for a watch. You want to zoom in? Uh, that zoom time. In uh, you might want to. OK, I'm off. I'm going to finish this out real quick. Yeah, we're a little bit far from Atalanta at the moment. Yes, I'm trying to. Thanks. Just getting a little zoom as we pass this guy. Oh, we're seeing. Can we come, will you come wide, please? Okay. I think we've got a few minutes there. Thank yeah. you very much to all I our listeners for getting ready for a watch change. And I'm going to be handing it over to Brittany, our science communication fellow.
Are you happy if I take the bubble? Gabby? Gabby, are you happy if I take the bubble cam for a second? Oh, yeah, Just go for it. Thanks. 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 Hello, 48. Hello, Hello. 48. Oh. Science. We have the ship stopped. Uh, Atalanta's still swinging. Um, and unless there's anything to do here, I would recommend we keep putting in moves just to keep the momentum going. Yep. Um, I don't see a lot of loose material here for rock collection, so I think we should make at least one more move or a couple more moves and just see if anything improves. Yep. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah, we just got into this kind of plateau area on the way up the seamount. Yep, that's all right. Okay, Gabby, okay to make a move? Yeah. We're doing uh, 110, and they've been doing 50 meter steps just to keep moving. That yeah, for you. sweet. That seems great. I mean, looking at the bathymetry here, yeah. it seems super mellow. Exactly. Um, yeah. As long as we don't end up over the northern face of this, yep. I'm fine with just even having a pretty decent sized layback. Perfect. Bridge now. All right. Yeah, yeah I think we're going to try and look there, see if there's talus there's, material. Uh, can we do a five zero meters, one one zero when you're ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty, good afternoon, at least this afternoon here. Um, this is, Brittany speaking, one down of down the down. science communication fellows it aboard the, the EV Nautilus. Yeah, yeah different number. We yeah. just did a watch change, so now you're going to be hearing from the four to eight crew. There's, a, there's another rock here somewhere. I don't remember the number. If anybody is just joining us, we are currently in the middle of a dive. This? this is one of the deepest dives that we've done so far on this cruise. Actually, it is the deepest dive that we've done. Our maximum depth looks like it was just over 3,000 meters. We are diving at an isolated seamount under, uh, or in the, uh, in the western region of Johnston Atoll. And we are here looking for the uh, biological components as well as geological. So just getting a better idea of what kinds of life or what kinds of um, geological aspects we can find in this area. If you have any questions or comments as we are exploring, please feel free to reach out. We do have a chat available uh, just below the live stream. If you want to go ahead and write in some questions or comments, feel free to do that, and I'll try my very best to address those as we go along. We also have a special mission, this watch. What's our special mission? Well, we were just, science was just deputized. What, what are we, what's our mission? Our special mission. Deputized? As, uh, since there have not been many rocks collected. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, rocks, <laughs> yeah. Rocks. Yeah. It's not really a new mission, but no. we do have to collect <laughs> all of the rocks. All Correct. the rocks. So. <laughs> mission reinforced. Oh, yeah. boy. And if anybody cares, the shrimp count is <laughs> three. That's going to change. So who's been drawing all the little squat lobster cartoons I on know. the whiteboard? What's that about? Lobster. <laughs> lobster. <laughs> lobster, yeah. What, oh, what is I that love about? it. Like in all caps, too. It's the best. It's very strange and funny. Yeah, so for our uh, viewers online, we have a... Uh, whiteboard downstairs where we kind of just keep everybody on the same page about the cruises and somebody decided to draw squat lobsters on that whiteboard and they're adorable and amazing and I love them and next to the squat lobsters all it says is L-O-B-T-R lobster. lobster and we love it but we don't know who did it the and there's more every day yeah and oh, the question right. is is lobster actually an acronym um, oh interesting that is that mysterious. makes it less funny that's both. Stand by, I'll work on some acronyms. 
we're gonna, if we're, oh, so ready. If we're lingering, uh, can we just take a quick look here? Oh yeah. And while we're on the move. Absolutely. Go for zoom. <laughs> Steve, have you been watching the dive through the last watch? <laughs> I've been watching the dive all day. <laughs> How has the biology level changed through the day? Uh, interesting that you say that. It's actually, I mean, for me, it's it's been stunningly different than our dives previously because we entered the uh, seamount at a different depth range entirely. This is a bamboo coral. Um, I'll just get a good shot of it and carry on. Um, and we collected some specimens that are totally different from what we've seen or collected so far and are characteristic of the lower um, lower bathial and, uh, and abyssal zone. Uh, so we actually dove in a completely different zone of the water column that uh, than we have, the entire cruise. Oh, and okay. we found different species. Um, a lot of bamboo coral sponges, probably uh, you know, straddle that, that boundary between bathyal and abyssal, so I wouldn't say they're tremendously different, but there were some really okay. interesting Go sponge percent. morphologies. Um, but genera and maybe species we've already seen so far and that are known oh. from this area. A little too far in. Oh, sorry. It's okay. That's good. There. And uh, we're Fishes. also looking at a really nice we need mixture to get some of pillow basalts with uh, really a moderate really amount of sediment load on there. And it's bouncy. So, <laughs> they're pretty um, smooth so looking. Go wide. More sediment than we've seen in uh, previ previous dives. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Data or science, did you get what you needed of that bamboo? Yeah, yep. Okay, great. Yep. We need to get some rocks. Uh, the vehicle's too bouncy. Okay. Until we get rocks, the if zooms will be bouncy. If you insist. <laughs> I do. Uh, we, can, we can collect, we can attempt to collect one in this area. Uh, they are looking a little rounded, which, you know, isn't ideal, but again, uh, it's a more of a numbers game. So uh, I'm sure if you want to, you know, land anywhere, we can look around and probably grab something. Nick, you're fairly quiet in my headset. Is that just me? No, Same it's quiet good. as well. I think just better. moving the microphone so closer to your mouth. How's that? That's Much good. better. All right. Thank you. really tough to tell some of the you know when you see these lumpy things they may be cemented it maybe requires some poking uh, some rocks but um, maybe we'll have good luck yeah anywhere you want yeah um, we're um, not gonna need to stop the ship for this I don't think so okay. we can just like we can just do whatever we need to do all right well in that case uh I've got a little bit of uh, distance out front of Atalanta, and so anywhere you want. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Can I don't know. It's up to you. It's a little big, but I think it might. Ooh, Is it's there got like a sponge there? on it, hey? Can I a twofer? Completely up to you, though. Yeah, that that's might be too big. That's almost yeah, maybe 30 centimeters. centimeters in the long direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice sponge on it. Anything else you're looking at here? Um, can we kind of zoom in on that over there? That's set too big as well. Okay. I think it is. It's kind of hard to tell until you really get close up. Go for zoom video? Or maybe the one right next to it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Interested there? Sure. Okay. Go wide. Woohoo. So Nick, would you mind recapping for the people viewing online? What is it that you're looking for in a rock? Why did you choose that one? Um, yeah, so ideally we're going to be looking for angular rocks that uh, show less sign of weathering on the outside of the rock. Uh, unfortunately, these rocks are all so right below the uh, kind of Okay. Rounded to sub-rounded, 
uh, in their texture. Uh, but uh, at this point in the dive, we haven't collected too many rocks, uh, so we're just kind of sort of playing catch up and hopefully a little bit along uh, where this one. we have a little bit more relief change. Okay. Uh, we can maybe come across a talus field. Uh, oh, that one. I think that was one I pointed um, out. To your right one. They just oh, circled yeah. this one. Sorry. <laughs> oh, did you circle a different one? one? Uh, I that might one. have, yes, yeah. Okay, uh, you can go for that one first. Okay. Yeah. okay. Not, um, that other one looked a little looser. Maybe a second choice. Oh, sorry, Nick. I'm having trouble hearing you. I'm like stepping oh. all over. Oh, okay. Your sampling desires here. Yep. I'm going to turn you up a little bit, Nick. Yeah, please. Thank you. Are you out of reach? Um, no. Okay. It's loose. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Gonna get a view of my arm really quickly. Uh, video, you can go a little bit wider. Okay. Thanks. There you go. Uh, yeah, you are all the way stretched out there. That's the end of your reach. Oh, sweet. Yeah, just. Uh, uh, Is that a Herc smash? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, She's sneaking us closer. <laughs> Sorry. The other one looks, doesn't look bad either. Which one? This one? Well, it's up to you. Uh, is that one too big, do you think? That's no. kind of left here. Um, but I need to probably move the vehicle to get there. Uh, okay. Even knows? if you just change your heading, if that's possible, just kind uh, of bunny hop. I think just, I, I'll just hop over. Okay. Little Herc hop. Herc hop. Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe a video control issue. Okay. If anybody was wondering, we are using two ROVs in order to conduct this dive. The main ROV that we're using um, is Hercules, and that is the one where you're able to see um, on your screens at home. So d all the different camera views for the most part, except for uh, satellite feed number Just two, channel more. two, that is coming from the other ROV that is at <coughs> excuse me, Atalanta. Nice. Go wide. Beautiful. Yeah, that looks good to me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, can we? Yeah. Yeah, we'll we? just get it out of the dust cloud here. Brown one. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Brown one, what sample number is this? Uh, 101. 101, thank you. And this is going in starboard bio? In starboard bio. Yep. Which it, box? It, do you think it will fit in one of the smaller ones? If not, it can go in F. Uh think so. It might be easier to tell once it's around that side. I okay. think it'll go. Kinda yeah. Bigger than I expected. What do you think that is? 20 to 25? Let's go for yeah, it. Okay. Uh, the box is even open. Thank you. I think it's smaller than it looks. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it fits pretty much right between the fingers. And does it matter which small box? Yeah, so if we're going for small A, C, or D. Okay. Just not B. So A is the furthest uh, forward. Furthest forward. Okay, thanks. So you can see that Hercules has several different um, compartments in order to store the collections, the samples that we are collecting. So in addition to these boxes, there's also uh, some jars, bottles, Beautiful. Nice work. Thank you. Oh my god. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> Bridge now. Call that a subangular 15 to 20 centimeters? No, no, they're five zero meters, one one zero. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. yeah, he actually wasn't joking. So, uh, yeah, I know. You, the you guys would have made it funny. Sorry, yeah, uh, Go for it. You close the box. Is that angular real quick? Settled, so we can take off. Sub-angular, sub-aerial, sub-everything. Is sub-angular really weird? Wait. Yeah, so 
<laughs> let, let me let me describe this for you. Real quick. So uh, when you're when you're talking about weathering of a rock, it's often described described by its shape, nice. whereas an angular rock okay. is considered to be not off. very altered, and a rounded rock will be uh, considered very altered. Mm -hmm. And in between, uh, you have basically a, a couple different variations of uh, uh, descriptions that are in between angular and. Uh, and rounded, and we just simply refer to those as subangular and subrounded. And if we look on the internet, I don't make the rules. Verifiable. I don't make the rules. <laughs> I don't make the rules. We'll have uh, make your own rules, Nick. Or, yeah, <laughs> live a little. So obviously we are seeing a whole lot of rocks down here. I'm sure that Nick is very, very happy about this. Um, but like I said earlier, in addition to the geology of the deep sea, we're also wanting to explore the biology as well. So uh, Steve, can you tell us a little bit about what we have seen and what we might expect to see down here? Sure. Um, it, we started the dive expecting to see different fauna and we did. Um, below 3,000 meters or so, it's not a depth that we've explored very much. There were different species of bamboo corals largely, but also some other um, invertebrate fauna that, um, that we were you know, interested in collecting to characterize both those depths, uh, which are probably the most poorly explored of the entire Johnson Atoll region. Um, but, you know, also, you know, we wanted to see at the landing site, what the substrate characteristics were like. We expected to see a lot of sediment, maybe sea pens and those kinds of things associated with that ha type of habitat, but it was actually quite rocky, and it's been rocky the whole time. I don't think we've seen hardly a stretch of sediment that wasn't more than a sand channel with maybe uh, with maybe some some uh, crusty nuggets or something like that. Um, uh -huh. But as we move up, I expect to overlap kind of the depth ranges and depth uh, zones that we've been exploring so far, and so we'll see their similar, uh, kind of similar characteristic fauna to what we've seen on the last several dives, including our you know, hemichorallium species, precious corals, uh, as well as um, you know, other bamboo coral species and maybe uh, more Chrysogorgia species. All right. But sponges, interestingly, we haven't seen a Walteria sponge yet, which uh, is suggests that it's a much more shallow distribution um, than what we've seen on other sites. So that, that was an interesting note on sponges. It's mo been mostly stocked colophagus and, um, and ferraid sponges. Uh, what else? Bolosoma species. There's a sea star. Mm -hmm. Bersinged sea star. I thought that's what it was. I didn't want to say it in case I was wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, go on. Bersinged. So again, those are the sea stars or a type of sea star that is planktivorous. So um, do sea stars only have two ways of eating? There's, they can, you know, they can be predators. They can be um, yeah, so is there a kind of planktivorous, uh, sort of steeper section there. Suspension yep. feeders, okay. and they can also Let's be uh, detritivores. Lay back before we get there, because uh, yeah. meaning they eat sediments and organic materials in the sediments. So they they have a very um, diverse way of extracting energy from the environment. The chat is requesting that we do some intros. I think that's an excellent idea. Let's do that. So again, this is the four to eight watch. We will be here for the next four hours or so. Um, my name is Brittany. I am a science communication fellow here on the EB Nautilus. I'm joining on this cruise um, just for this one. And I am from the California Science Center in Los Angeles. So in LA, I work as a senior educator at that science center and I absolutely love it. 
I had a really, really, really great time, and I'm so grateful that I was able to uh, come here on this ship so I could take this experience home and share it with the others yes. um, in the LA area. So that's a little bit about me. And then sitting next to me, I have Nick. Nick, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Brittany. Uh, my name is Nick Foresta. This is my first time aboard the EV Nautilus. Uh, I come from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Graduate Department of Geoscience, studying seamounts, uh, collecting ages on those seamounts, and trying to understand the uh, reconstruct plate tectonics through hotspot tracks. All right. I'll go next. My name is Steve Oskovich. I'm the watch lead for the 4-8 uh, watch and hmm. also the Where's biology science from? lead for this particular expedition to Johnson Atoll and thereabouts. Um, my uh, Normally, yeah. uh, when I'm Maybe not on Nautilus, right? I'm a postdoctoral associate at Boston yeah. University where I study the biodiversity of deep sea corals, chiefly in the Central Pacific. Mm -hmm on sea mounts and, and, and other large submarine features. Um, and I use different kinds of approaches to under, understand the diversity and distribution of those animals at depth in these parts, uh, including tools like um, you know, morphology, uh, morphological approaches, identifying corals and, and their um, associated animals, as well as uh, molecular tools like genetics and eDNA. All right, thanks, Nick. Thank you, Steve. And let's hear from Bronwyn. Hi, my name is Bronwyn. I am from Kauai on, in the state of Hawaii, and I am the ocean science intern on this expedition. And I am in charge of data logging as we have the ROV in the water and then assisting in the wet lab as we're cataloging and preparing the samples that we do collect on our dives. And when I'm not at sea, this is the only time, first time I've been at sea, I'm interning with the State Department of Land and Natural Resources, and I work with the seabird conservation um, on Kauai. Thank you, Bronwyn. Yeah, I feel like I ask Bronwyn at least once a day, what kind of bird is that? <laughs> <laughs> we see one flying around the ship, so. Excellent. So that's um, everybody here in the back row, and then in the front row we have our navigator, ROV pilots, and um, video. So if you all in the front row want to go ahead and introduce yourselves, that'd be great. Okay. It's a big rock there. Uh, that looks like 40 centimeters across. Can you tell who has the pencil? <laughs> oh, right. sorry. I thought you were going for the. I thought it was Nick with the uh, rock <laughs> in the library with the candelabra. <laughs> Very polite. Yeah. Like that's no. forty centimeters. I just I saw something red, so I had to circle it. You just kept <laughs> circling it over and over yeah. again. <laughs> I looked at it. Go for zoom. Must have that rock. Need more rock. <laughs> this is, looks like a. Maybe a different Brasingid. Oh, there's a tiny little baby uh, black coral too in the in the um, Triclops cam. This camera is so useful for seeing things that I would never see normally. Yeah. Can yeah. you put a Triclops up for me? What gave you the idea that this is a different uh, Brasingid? Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, it it could be the same, but it, it's a little bit larger, a little bit more densely pigmented, so darker red. Yeah, I did notice that. It was that. missing maybe an arm. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the other day, two dives ago, that some of these Brasingid sea okay. stars I'm are predated it. upon. Yeah. Yeah, we're good, thanks. Go ahead. Um, are predated upon by other sea stars, uh, and so that could be a source of the predation uh, and loss of limbs, which they can grow back. So it seems like we're in another one of those areas with a little bit more sediment, but apparently not enough sediment for uh, for a lot of life, right? Yeah, it's interesting to know. It's um, it's probably pretty thin 
yeah. thin veneer of sediment. Um, not many fish. I saw more fish, I would say, down deeper where, uh, you know, we had, uh, I'd say, in the vicinity of waypoint two. Steve. Yeah. Uh, are you interested in going to waypoint three or potentially going straight over to waypoint four? Um, I think we're going to head towards, well, yeah. I mean, I, I think we'll find more rock material in the vicinity of waypoint three. Okay. Yeah. Okay, That's, we'll yeah. keep heading that way. And I, I do like waypoint three because we saw a lot of biodiversity also at waypoint two, which had a similar kind of uh, promontory effect. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, that rise will have a mm -hmm. little bit more stuff over there too. Great. But I think if we make it, can you zoom out on the whole track? Yep. Yep, so waypoint five is the, I guess the summit, essentially. Uh, or is there more? Six. Six, yeah. I, th I think uh, I think we should be able to make good progress at least to waypoint three by this watch if we just keep cruising a bit. Um, and then we'll see how far we get, but maybe in the vicinity of waypoint four by the end of the dive. Roger, cruising. Yeah, we're going to cruise a little bit until we start seeing some more talus material that's... Uh, we can pick up maybe a few rocks. Yeah, hopefully uh, right before waypoint three, we might find a little debris field. The biology is sparse here as well, mm -hmm. so it's nothing really to spend too much time zooming in on. Yeah. On the same brazingid over and over and over again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're just going in circles. <laughs> nav, <laughs> what are you so doing? <laughs> Sleepy <laughs> Nav? <laughs> Sleepy Nav camp? Oh, no. Sleepy Nav. I'm awake now. <laughs> Bridge Nav. Well, they, you know, they used to call it Navigesser for, for a reason. <laughs> uh, somebody in the chat is curious about, um, are we able to distinguish or identify meteor rocks at these depths? I wouldn't imagine you'd be able to identify them just by looking at them. I mean, without a, a real chemical analysis or I think Samantha mentioned the other day um, when a space agency like NASA might track the trajectory of a meteorite and have a general idea of where they're looking, uh, that might be a good idea. But um, other than that, it would be like finding a needle in a haystack, which is often why uh, meteorites are collected in deserts and uh, like in Antarctica where they stick out. And even when we had coordinates working with NASA to find meteorite shards, uh, it was still like finding a needle in a haystack. Uh, in, in a field of haystacks. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> on a planet of fields. Haystacks. <laughs> yeah. And the only way you can really confirm that is through uh, isotope analysis and uh, a lot, lot of chemistry, a lot of chemical work. Yeah, so that'd be kind of a bummer if you like do all of that and then it turns out to not even be a meter, right? It was really fun playing with that ultra powerful magnet they had. Uh, we had, uh, you know, we got loaned a super ultra powerful magnet that we could just run. drag around the ocean floor. Yeah, pre pretty much drag oh, around the ocean cool. floor and and then it mostly attracted a lot of iron shavings and filings but yeah we uh, at least in 2020 when we went back to the site we did a lot of vacuuming of like several one square meter plots mm. with a suction hose you went back with Falkor? no on uh, no. uh with nautilus we went in, back to that site again in 2020 yeah oh oh that was that was covid year right yeah yeah i, I guess remember I that wasn't out for that year Falcor went to that we site did as one well, dive, right? yeah, one dive in 2020. Okay. Samantha, do you know if they confirmed any meteorite collections on that? Uh, our yeah, our the dive, first, the first cruise yeah. collected a couple of fragments. Yeah, really. Yeah, but That's I don't think so there cool. were fragments collected on the second dive or on the Falcor cruise. But yeah, it took it took several months. Um, actually, I think over a year for results to come through for that one. Yeah. 
we were all like naively standing around in the ROV shop being like, did we get anything? Did we yeah. get anything? <laughs> they going to tell us if we got something? Yeah. Because we were like all making like tools with magnets on them for days. And, and writing our names on the magnets to see so who was going to yeah. catch the Vader. <laughs> so <rain. laughs> stoked. I had no idea. What That's was awesome. Going uh, at uh, UNLV, we, we used to have a, a rock identification open to the public. And every time somebody had a, a, a stony or a, a heavy rock, you know, with, with metal in it, they assumed it was either uh, some kind of precious metal or uh, or a meteorite. When it was mostly just iron in there, uh, ninety nine percent of the time. Well, iron's like heavy, right? So it yeah, feels exactly. expensive. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> feels special. Um, <laughs> and if you want to spend a lot of money, you can get uh, some chemical work done on it. Or do some SEM work. What's that? Uh, electron microscope. Uh, um use that with a couple other techniques to use a laser and to pinpoint little spots on rocks to kind of get a idea of what it is composed of. So Nick, you want to wait for our next rock collection until we get closer to the steep slope? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if we if we see any, you know, talus fields that it's just, just really loose and, and really angular rocks, um, I'll probably want to collect a couple of those. but. Uh, I'll probably within the next half hour or so. Okay. Grab grab one. Speaking of meteorites, I was just reading an article about um, from a few years ago about a man in Michigan who brought his um, this rock that he had had uh, out in the barn to one of to a uh, geology ID lab at, at a local university, and he had gotten the rock from the previous owner of the farm. Um, who had seen it, he, he bought the farm in the 80s, the previous owner had seen a meteorite fall out of the sky in the 1930s with his oh. family, and they had gone out and found it out in the field and dug it up, and wow. they used it as a doorstop forever. And oh when this guy gosh. bought the farm in the 80s, he said, well, you own this meteorite now. And he didn't get it verified until a few years ago. And it was <laughs> a out, meteorite? It was this huge meteorite. Yeah. And the university ended up buying it, because it was like, yeah. it was massive, yeah. Mm -hmm. Samantha, I'm wondering yeah. if the artifact on the mezzo for um, Atalanta yeah. isn't Atalanta. I'm thinking that as well. Like the maybe we need to recomp up the uh, spring mechanism that makes I c I can't see on Atalanta on Argus you can see whether the the sonar has gone down. Oh really? You know how the okay. sonar like is sort of tucked inside Atalanta when it's on right. deck, so it doesn't hit the deck. And it comes down at about 50 meters um, from like uh, ambient pressure on a little piston. Okay, so um, it and if it droops a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. if um, yeah, so it droops to be below the vehicle, and if there's like maybe the oil in there, I think okay. there might be a section of it that's got air in it. Um, right. Isn't up to pressure. It may not be coming down. Yeah. Can you red book that, Karen? to check the meso pressure. The red book is downstairs. Rats. Okay. I have a, here, I have a paper. I have a white, white paper. This is how science works. A white paper has been written. <laughs> this is how <laughs> ROV works. <laughs> 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 she wrote it on her head. <laughs> 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 um, Perfect. Can you send a text to the group to tell them to bring up the red book for the next watch? Yes, I will do. Yes, yeah, so either that, we have three very large uh, fish. Us. It's getting a little bit more lumpy. Yeah, yeah, it seems boring. unlikely that we have three very large fish I following know. us, but like a girl can dream. I What's know. this coming <laughs> up? I, would, I, would I was like, like a large sponge coming up. Yeah. Bridge now. Um, where do you see that, Steve? We can add another uh, five zero meters. Right. One zero. Uh, oh, coming up. You think sponge, hold not on, rock? Yeah. No, okay. it, it, I think it's a right, whatever this is. Rock. I, I was looking in the. <laughs> no, no, this is that rock. Uh, rock. Yeah, it's rock. Really? This is a fun game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sponge or rock? Sponge That's or rock? Sponge <laughs> or rock? I, uh, I, I, I vote for rock. It's a That's rock. That's a rock? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> One point for We're seeing things out here. <laughs> seeing what we want to see. I see a whale. You know? <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. Uh. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere out there. There is a whale somewhere <laughs> in the ocean, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> you know there is. At least one. At so Matthew, your uh, story about that meteorite reminds me of like just like antique antiques roadshow. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, you know, Love that show. Also, what a way to hold the door open. Right? <laughs> yeah, barn door for like a hundred years. Incredible. It sounds heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't doubt it was effective <laughs> at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it probably didn't it's do a lot of damage or anything. <laughs> yeah. And that the guy knew it was a meteorite, but when he sold the ranch with the barn, he was like, he oh, just, like, this is sure, your meteorite you just now. just have it. Yeah. It comes with the territory. <laughs> yeah. Now it's in a museum in a University of Michigan. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, some folks online are wondering, what's the difference between Argus and Atalanta? So as I mentioned before, currently we're using two ROVs to conduct these dives. The main one is Hercules. The I hate to call it the other one, but we're also <laughs> using... <laughs> <laughs> the, the other one, yeah, is Atalanta, um, and you can see the video feed that Atalanta is producing on Channel 2. So Atalanta is used to kind of keep an eye on Hercules as Hercules is uh, diving and collecting samples and all of that stuff. It's just another way for us to get an idea of where Hercules is in the space. Um, but in addition to Atalanta, uh, there was another ROV, Argus, that has also been used previously. So Argus is currently on land. Um, there are still plans to use Argus. Don't worry, Argus has not gone away forever. It's just uh, for these cruises, um, we've opted to use Atalanta instead. Atalanta is a bit smaller than Argus. Um, I think a little easier to maneuver. So Hercules is tethered to Atalanta by a 30 meter uh, tether. And then Atalanta is connected to the ship. So if anybody's wondering how that's working. So speaking of introductions, we also uh, didn't get to some of the other characters on board. Yeah. yeah. Is it my turn? Let's see. Uh, Gabby Inglis, ROV team. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Stuck landed. Perfect. Yeah, All right. <laughs> Answered it with <laughs> by inflecting up as if I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> Gabby Inglis? I'm pretty sure. Is that who I am? I am pretty sure. <laughs> Is it future Gabby or past Gabby? Oh. Mm, mm. Interesting question. <laughs> Already philosophizing. I don't, I don't know. That's fair. Uh, time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Samantha, can we stop going downhill now, please? <laughs> uh, I mean, yes. I would like to say that. We could. Why don't we go this way, and then we'll. Um, I think that will be more downhill. Well. Yeah, I guess you're right. Now that I'm looking at it again. So how about that way? There shouldn't really be this much of an elevation change based on the bathy, but. Um, so if you started going more zero nine zero, I think we would at least be more going across it rather yeah. than down. Okay, um, do but that. then we're not going to your waypoint, so I oh, guess we have you. to keep doing this, and I have to just suck it up. It's fine. It, if if we need to adjust slightly, let's let's go up slope. Um, we can keep going down slope, but I think you'll get a better view of everything if we're going. Yeah, we don't want to go down slope. Across the slope. Yeah. You want to try zero nine zero and see how it does us? Let's try zero nine zero and see how it does us. Yes. The waypoints are just points in space, right? Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Well, <laughs> ocean. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I Sorry. mean, as far as I can tell, they're still Ooh. in the computer. Here's an alive I mean, thing. Yeah. Ooh, a live thing. Uh, okay, we'll do uh, zero nine zero. Go for zoom. Yeah. Bridge now. Very nice. High density. Uh, Can we do a five zero meter zero nine here? zero? Unbranched, thick axis, really dark nodes. Actually, it has interesting. Uh, it has a thicker growth on the bottom, mm -hmm. and then yeah. it's almost like a new growth on top. Yeah. What do you think would cause that? Uh, growth, growing. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a good explanation. Growth <laughs> I mean, it, it could it could uh, have been predation, and then okay. you know. Some parasite, the parasite, you know, either moved on or, or the predator moved on and then it regrew. I'd call it a success story in <laughs> bamboo coral world. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Too many times bamboo corals just don't, yeah, don't, don't get, uh, that, the outcome is not good for them. 
because the parasites take over their colony or the predator eats all their polyps. That was a resilient coral. Yeah. It went the distance. Yeah. On the lower side of this boulder to the right of this crinoid, there is a black coral. Go a little wider so you can see that coral. Stop there. Oh yeah, there we go. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is one we saw a little bit deeper as well. We're just going to quick give it a quick scan and see if there's any associated animals with it. Okay, push in. I see some worms, though. Oh, there's that worm again. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Maybe <laughs> is that the same worm that, that we saw worm. on the previous day? I think it was a different worm. This one okay, worm looks away. a little uh, lighter in color. But yeah, that is so we'll amazing. Keep an eye out for tell. it as we go through. We haven't start started seeing um, the more common associates like the squat lobsters. Even on the umbellopathies we saw a bit deeper, we didn't see any associates, uh, you know, macrofaunal associates or megafaunal associates associated with it. Lobster. Lobster. I guess worms would be classified as macrofauna in this case. Looks like there's a black coral in the sediment there. Go for zoom. Oh. Yep, looks like the same black the coral same in the one. background, yep. So we haven't seen any fish yet this watch. I know that we have seen some on this dive, though. Um, but somebody in the chat is specifically curious about snailfish. So, Steve, I don't know if you know much about snailfish and why they might be called snailfish. Um, so let's okay, see. Okay, uh, Snailfish. So we do sometimes see snailfish, uh, but they're kind of rare. Uh, if we do, they're often curled up in the water column and kind of drift down a uh, slope. Uh, snailfish are sometimes, at least in, in my experience, more commonly associated with the benthos at maybe higher latitudes or especially in um, chemosynthetic environments like seeps and hydrothermal vents, they often inhabit those uh, kind of boundary conditions between um, where the waters are warm and fluid rich and, uh, and productive. Um, so we do see them from time to time, but not, not often. And I think we're a little bit, probably a little bit too deep um, for seeing most of the co more common species in yeah. this area. Too deep and not any sea vents that we know of. Yeah. Around this area. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but there are, sna there are snailfish that inhabit deeper depths. They're just specialists, um, but not common on these seamount landscapes. And then you said that sometimes you can see them like curled up. So maybe that's why they're called snailfish. Maybe. Yeah. I'm uh. not sure why they're called snailfish. Yeah. But yeah, they do this really interesting maneuver, presumably to to um, save energy. But they curl up into almost like a ring, and they just kind of float, float <laughs> down the slope. I love that. Yeah. Whatever way you choose to get to work. <laughs> yeah. Like that uh, hermit crab with the anemone backpack. Yes. From the other night. That was yes. I. It's just so cute. I loved it. Steep. Oh yeah, pretty deep. Pretty deep. Yeah. So they they get down to hadal depths. I know um, my first cr my first expedition on Nautilus, I sa we sampled a few snailfish uh, inadvertently. Oftentimes, we don't sample fish because they can swim away, and uh, we sample we were sampling the hydrothermal vents at the mid Cayman Rise, and amongst all the shrimp and um, and shellfish and things that inhabit the chimneys uh, at hydrothermal vents at the Cayman Rise spreading center. Um, we, we ended up sucking up a few fish we didn't know at the time, preserved them, and uh, I believe they made their way to the collections of the MCZ. Hmm. But we can search that. That'd be good to know. So we're starting to see a few more loose rocks, but you know, all this sediment covering isn't isn't great. Hopefully we'll come up to a little bit more clearing where we can before we can collect another rock. Uh, can you give Atalanta a heading of zero nine zero?